Hola chamas y chamos, welcome back to another episode of Álvaro de Blabs. I'm super sleepy, it's like 9 in the morning. Today we're going to learn how to use our favorite Vue 3 plugin into our Nox3 applications using the Nox3 plugins. Let's not be confused about Nox modules, which is a different thing. Nox modules provide a high order extension of the core functionality of Nox. In the meantime, plugins are just a way of extending with the JavaScript uh, library, extending the Vue.js application. So Nox plugins allows you to extend the functionality of your Nox app uh, in three different ways. One of the ways is making the functions of values available on client side and server side. Uh, it allows you to use your favorite Vue uh, JS plugin in your application. In this example, it's a, a Vue tooltip, for example. So this is the one that we are going to learn in this tutorial. And also allows you to uh, use external JavaScript packages or modules into your Nox application. One great example is the Axios library, which you can uh, directly create your plugin to be able to use it. For this tutorial, I will assume that you have a certain knowledge of Nox or have you used Nox 2 in the past. We're covering Nox 3, which is recently released. So there are a few things that change. If you want to check how to install Nox 3 and how to use it in first glance, I made a video just like two weeks ago. You can check it here or here or here. Without further ado, let's continue with the video. I have here the Nox3 documentation and in the part of the installation we are going to use this command to initialize a new project. So it's npx noxc, which is a new CLI, init nox3 app. So I'm going to take a term here, I already selected a folder and I'm just going to copy and paste the command. Uh, maybe I will give another name to it. Okay, so this is the version of the Nox CLI that we are installing and it seems like it's already. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna code or oh, open in VS Code. Um, <laughs> next three awesome plugin example. Okay, so this should be opening a BS code tab. So I'm gonna close this one. Yeah, as always, I trust the authors of this. Uh, no, I'm going to zoom a little bit so it's in a good size for the video. And here we have our bearable, like practically naked uh, Nox3 application, right? Let's run it first to check that everything is okay. I'm gonna clear this and yarn dev. Noxy command not found. Oh yeah, I have to install everything, so yarn. There is no node module, so when it creates the application, it doesn't right away um, install the packages. You can see it probably here, yeah, okay. So let's use yarn dev. Okay, and if we open here, perfect, we have our, our application. So now let's find a UGS plugin that we want to integrate into our Nox app. So I already got mine. Uh, if I go here, I have a library uh, for dynamic forms in view. And I'm going to select this one. So I want to integrate this into Nox3. We go to the documentation itself from Nox3 uh, and we go to Docs plugins. Uh, here it says like uh, how to create a new one. Um, we're going to copy and paste this 
something that has been improved from the Nox 2 one is that um, you don't need to manually import the plugins into your Nox config. It's already auto-generated or auto-registered. So here we have our application. I'm going to create a new folder called plugins. And inside of it, let's create a new TypeScript. So I'm going to call it PDF from View Dynamic Forms login.ts and we are going to copy and paste this so basically from um, this needs to be the same like it needs to be um, app and you import the find Nox plugin and with that it's going to pass you a Nox app object and we're basically going to use Nox app and inside of Nox app there is something called view app so basically, this is exactly the same as uh, using app dot use and applying any plugin that you want, like plugin here. Okay, so it's the same syntax. So let's go again to our library and let's check on installing it. So yeah, let's add this. So I'm gonna open a new terminal here. I'm gonna use yarn add. Let's install also Nox Windy CSS to um, style a little bit. And as igloo view forms. Okay, so this will install both packages. Cool. Here we're gonna import create dynamic forms and we are gonna do it from the package you just installed here and let me check if this is the correct thing. Yeah. So we create the plugin here. And we're gonna pass this as use here, view dynamic forms. So it's as easy as this. Okay, how we can check that it work? Let's go to your, our app here. Let's remove the Nox welcome, and we are gonna use the dynamic forms uh, component that comes with the library. We need to pass it a form. So we are going to open here a script tag. So composition TSV, okay, nice. And in the setup, we are going to create a const um, form, it should be a reactive. And inside of it, we need to put an ID. So this is the ID of the form, um, test form maybe. And inside here, we are going to define the fields. So this library, uh, what I like about it is that I can import text field. Let's import also password field. So this is our like factory functions that allows you to create the fields really fast. So as igloo view dynamic forms. Okay. So username. It's gonna be a text field. And yeah, we can set this here. This is, okay, so label username. Okay. Let's use a password. Okay, password field. Okay, nice. We need to return this const here. And so it's available in the template itself. So at the end of here, I think, yeah, cons, we're gonna return the form. Okay. So let's see if it, that works actually. Let's see in the spec. Console. Dynamic forms. Maybe it's dynamic form? Yeah, probably dynamic form. Okay, here we have it. 
Uh, of course it looks terrible because it doesn't have any style apply. Um, this library is style agnostic, so um, you can import some themes uh, pretty fine, like uh, Bootstrap Lightleash and Material. Um, but the idea is that you define your own styles. And for that, we installed the um, uh, Nox Windy CSS, which already has support for um, Nox tree. So build modules. I'm going to pass an array, I think, in here. We are going to put Nox Windy CSS. And bam! We have uh, the Nox Windy CSS already working. It's applying some um, predefined, so it's taking out the predefined style for the rest of it. So since this is not part of the actual context of the tutorial. I'm just going to do it really quick. I'm going to add an styles, uh, some styles for the, um, the form itself. And also let's add some things here. Um, I'm basically going to put a class here. I'm going to make it absolute inset zero full width full height oh hey sorry uh, and create like a card inside so leave the card and uh, so this is a dynamic form mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay and this one is going to be um, some shallow, large, maybe rounded, with a pattern of four. Um, let's add for this one, like it's flex and justify center item center. Okay, let's see how it looks. Can okay, okay. Maybe well, let's just increase the zoom here, so it's better. Maybe we can do it a little bit larger. So um, one third. Okay, okay it's better. So you see how easy is to implement uh, external library into your code. Let's see now what else we can do with the plugin API. For the second part of the tutorial, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to import a JavaScript library, specifically uh, the Ethers one. It's uh, commonly used in um, Web3 blockchain projects, especially in the client to get info about the contracts and so on. So let's do a plugin that allows you, us to have the global object in between the context of our Nox. So for that, we're going to create a new plugin here and we're going to call it Ethers. And we are going to add dot client dot ts. Why the client? Because these notations allows uh, Nox to define if the plugin is only for the client. You can also put dot server and it will be only in the server side of the application in case you're using server side rendering, for example. So we are interested that it only happens in the client. Also, I installed um, the la latest version of Ethers here. You can do it by the yarn add Ethers. So here, what we're going to do is, let's go here, um, and we are going to copy and paste just this part. Okay, and instead of providing hello, we are going to provide ethers. And basically here, instead of passing this message, we're going to import ethers here from ethers. And we're going to provide there to do it. How we're going to use it or test that it's working. Let's go to our app and simply let's grab um, 
dollar sign ethers from use next app. And let's just console log it to see if it actually works. Okay, let's go back to the browser. Now it says undefined. So maybe I think we had to restart the server. So it grabs the, the plugin again. Mm -hmm. Ethers on the file. Okay, perfect. So now you will see that uh, whenever we are uh, booting our application, we will have the ethers object here in the console log, and you can get uh, the wallet information, etc., from here. So pretty simple. You can add any JavaScript library in this way. In case that you want to have it available globally, if not, you can always import it in the component that you're going to use it. But this is a way of having it in the whole application. And that pretty much wrap up the basics of Nox three plugins. Of course, there are a lot more things that you can do. For that, you can check the documentation or ask me in the comments to do another video to uh, cover up more in detail. If you like this video, please subscribe and drop a like. It means a lot for the channel. The idea is to grow up a community where we can discuss Nox 3, View 3, whatever you want in terms of front-end development. See you in the next time. Bye.